Forests comprise less than 1% of South Africa's landscape, but display unusually high biodiversity. The degradation and fragmentation of forests through human activity are two key factors that are threatening the survival of South Africa's smallest biome and are leading to changes in the extent to which forest-dependent animals are found. A series of studies have been conducted as part of a large FPIP-funded project to compare the genetic diversity of populations of more mobile species, such as birds and bats, to those of more sedentary species, such as land snails and shrews. Principal investigator Prof. Mike Cherry explains why the decline in forest-dependent birds is bad news for less mobile forest animals. So what, well, what happened was about six or seven years ago, I had a master's student who looked at forest birds across South Africa and their decline uh, using the South African Bird Atlas project. And this, as you know, was the first one of these was conducted in the late 80s, early 90s, and then they started the second one in 2007. So for the first time for any tax in South Africa, we were able to say, well, what was here 25 years ago, they'd sent people out to every corner of the country, and what was here now? And she found that half of the forest dependent birds uh, in South Africa, those are birds that rely on forests for their uh, existence, were in decline. And birds are quite mobile taxa, as you know, and so they're able to move between forest patches. And we realized that if they were vulnerable, then other forest fauna would probably be more vulnerable. All FBIP funded projects are thematically situated within the context of global change and the bioeconomy. Cherry explains the background within which the project was carried out. The forests in southern Africa have changed naturally uh, over the course of time as a result of past climate changes. So if you go back to the mid Miocene, 14, so between 20 and 14 million years ago, in the Eastern Cape, forests covered much of the province. Where if you go to the last glacial maximum, which was 20,000 years ago, forests were only present in a few very small refugia. So you have a situation where we currently have had in our wetter uh, regime than the last glacial maximum, so we have more forests than we had then, but these forests are naturally fragmented. So that's the background against which the study takes place. Then if you think about anthrop other anthropogenic factors, what's happened um, since the advent of, of settlement in, in, the, in these areas. So in KwaZulu-Natal, a lot of Indian Ocean coastal forest was plowed up for sugar cane uh, in the last 200 years, basically. We estimate about 85% of it. Whereas in the Eastern Cape, this didn't happen because you had largely small-scale farmers there and they may have done some small-scale clearing, but nothing on the like on the scale of colonial farmers. And that's why 46% of, of South Africa's remaining indigenous forest is in the Eastern Cape because the Eastern Cape, dominated by the former homelands of Transkei and Siskei, was primarily small-scale farmers. Now, what is interesting is that since the Second World War, but at a much greater pace since the advent of democracy since 1994, these small-scale farmers have actually been abandoning quite a lot of their land, which, has regener which is re slowly now regenerating into forest. So we have, interestingly, the advent of actual more forest appearing, but at the same time, there's a lot of pressure on the existing forest in terms of informal utilization and harvesting of forest products. And so those are two very important other anthropogenic factors into that, that, that kind of fit into the, the global change equation. 